everybody how you doing how you doing hey i just want to come on in and address a comment that i keep getting between me and michael uh i noticed we're getting the same comments different reaction to uh, to what we're showing from different people it's the same comment coming from different people so let me go ahead and address it real quick and I'm going to show you, get your Bibles out, because this is going to be me. You know, I could do, uh, give you the simple version, but I'm going to go deep into it. All right, so uh, get your Bibles. The question is, or well, the comment is, you mean to tell me that for 2,000 years, this has been sitting right here and we've never seen it? Yeah. And I'm going to show you why. And if you believe the Bible, it's going to be clear to you. So get your Bibles, get your pen, get your paper. This is going to be good. This is meat right here. We're going to get some understanding on two days. Hosea 6, verses 1 and 2. My name is Brother Anthony, and this is Paradigm Shift. Okay, okay. Hosea six and two. Like I said, the comment is people people can't believe that we've been going on and we've been teaching this doctrine, uh, the church doctrine, this way for this many years, and nobody's caught it. Why hadn't anybody ever caught this before? Why do you see people now saying that? Um, I'm woke. I'm waking up. I'm waking up. Two reasons. One is because even in the um, secular world, we're in the age of Aquarius, the age of awakening. And I don't, you know, know nothing a lot about all that because I don't. That's nothing I look into. That's just something I heard. But what I do know is this here. And the Bible speaks about a time of awakening. All right. And we're going to get into it today. Hosea 6 verse 1. All right. Now, this is the prophet Hosea. He is a prophet to the northern kingdom. And uh, sorry, I was looking for folder I had something I want to show you uh, I must be in the other room but okay anyway he's a prophet to the northern kingdom and he's prophesying to Ephraim or the top 10 tribes right and Hosea 6 come and let us return unto the Lord for he hath torn and he will heal us he hath smitten and he will bind us up. After two days, two days, will he revive us. And in the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. All right, two days. Before we jump into the two days, let's jump over to Peter. Let's see what Peter has to say about the days. Okay, this is uh, 2 Peter 3, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. All right. So a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. Let's go back to Hosea. Hosea says, after two days will he revive us. And in the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. All right. Now, two things we need to remember. I hope you got your pens and your highlighters. Because we're about to go, we about to go back. 
A day with the Lord is as a thousand years. This is a manifold prophecy. This is going to have a short-term fulfillment and a long-term fulfillment. Right? And this is Hosea. He's speaking to the northern kingdom. The northern kingdom was uh, called Israel, sometimes called Ephraim. Why? Because Ephraim was the head tribe in the northern kingdom. All right? So let's go back all the way back to Genesis. Genesis uh, 48. 48, and we'll start at verse 17. 17, we're going to go down to 19. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father. For this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he shall become, and he shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he. And his seed shall become a multitude of nations. All right, a multitude of nations. This is Israel or Jacob. He's about to die and he wants to bless his grandsons. And he takes, you're supposed to put your right hand on the oldest because they're gonna get the, the bigger blessing. That's how it went. The oldest child got the bigger blessing. So Joseph took the kids and set them, stood them in front of Jacob in the right order. So when when Jacob went to bless him, he did like this and swapped and swapped. Okay. And Joseph went to tell his father, "Look, now you got this wrong. This is the oldest one." He said, I know. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. And he said, let's read that again. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son. I know it. And he shall become a people. He also shall be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he. And his seed shall become a multitude of nations. All right. Let's get this multitude of nations. How does this all go back to Hosea? Okay, you got to understand. I know the Bible, the table of contents. Let me let me just show this real quick. This, okay. See this table of contents here? Huh? What we got to understand when we read this is that a lot of these events are happening at the same time. A lot of these books are happening at the same time. Okay, that's why it's very important. Hold on, let me show you something. That when you study, when you study, it's important to have something like, I don't know if you can see this. Something like this here. Can you see that? Do you, do you see all of this stuff happening around the same time? These are all the prophets, all right? And it tells you who the prophet was, who he prophesied to, whether it be Judah, Assyria, Edom, or Ephraim, also called Israel. And the time over here, the timeline on when he spoke to those specific prophets. Okay, so a lot of this stuff is going on at the same time. 
All right. So Amos is speaking to the northern kingdom, Israel, before the Assyrians took them off. All right. So he's warning them, look, this is what about to happen to you. You're going to get taken off because you're serving other gods. You're disobedient. You're not keeping the commandments. And you're going to get taken off. And uh, you won't even return. All right. So I'm going to show you what happened. Let's go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 17. And it's, it's pretty long. I'll tell you what. We're going to play the audio. We're going to play the audio. And I might stop it a few times just to jump in and make a few points. But it's very important that you understand this. It's very important that you understand this because of this two days that we're talking about. This woman at the well. And it's very, very important. That you understand this for Paul's letters. Okay. If you don't get this, you 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 can't understand half the Bible. What do we have? We have we go to Genesis and we got a prophecy that Ephraim will be great. He's gonna be greater than his older brother, and he's gonna be a multitude of nations. All right. Second Kings 17 shows where this multitude of nations come to be. But watch what happens. Chapter 17. In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hoshea, the son of Elah, to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. Against him came up Shalmanizer, king of Assyria, and Hoshea became his servant and gave him presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hoshea, for he had sent messengers to So, king of Egypt, and brought no present to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land, and went up to Samaria, and besieged it three years. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Habor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. Okay, just a little quick recap. We got King Hoshea, the last king of Israel. He comes in. He's paying tribute to King Salmanazar, the Assyrian king who's over all the providence, all, all the land around them at that time. He, he's conquered everything. So they, he's, he's paying like tax money to him every year. But this one particular year, he's like, man, I ain't doing it. And he, he calls down to uh, e Egypt and talk to King Zoe and say, hey, I'm not doing it, and we ought to, we ought to get together and, hey, you know, just put an end to this. Gets back to the king, king comes down, puts him in jail, and then he seizes the city. He he comes and occupies the city for three years. And during those three years, this is this is the most important part. He takes the people who live in there, the Israelites, out of the land. And he moves them. Look at the map there. He moves them into Hala and Habar. And in the city of the Medes. Look at the uh, red arrow there. Uh, right there, Mead is, is hard, to, uh, hard to see. It's right there in white. But look at the red arrow. You can see where they went. And look at the green arrows coming in. What you're gonna see here is that he, while he moves them out, he's moving other people in. We ain't got to that part yet, but it's coming. Uh, 
but that that's the most that's important right because they're starting this is starting the scatter of the Israelites to the far ends of the earth this is starting it right here these next few verses we're gonna hear uh, verse 7 all the way down to 23 he's just recapping of what they did to pretty much piss him off what the Israelites did to piss God off just make him say hey I'm through tired of y'all get out of my face listen to what they did and pay attention to when he talks about Jeroboam Jeroboam was the first king as soon as they got there the very first thing he did was put up golden uh, calves one in the northern part of the country another in the southern part of the country and said this is your God this is where you worship now we're not going to Jerusalem no more because he, he was scared that if they went they stay. He lose all losing his people. So he set up all uh, idols for them to worship in the northern kingdom. But anyway, listen to these next few verses. This is it's kind of you know a little lengthy, but uh, it's, it's God telling them what you did to make me mad. All right. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt, from under the hand of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, and walked in the statutes of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel, and the kings of Israel, which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God. And they built them high places in all their cities, from the tower of the watchmen to the fence city. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them, and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they served idols, whereof the Lord had said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes. Now I had to stop it right there. Because you saw my last video. Do you love him? You know where I'm going. He just said that they didn't keep his statutes and commandments. And he sent warning them through the prophets. And if you saw my last video, what did Christ say? Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. Keep my commandments. Malachi, I'm the Lord thy God. I change not. And you, you, you got God ridiculing, ridiculing them right here in the Old Testament. And he sent them away because they didn't do what he said. You got Christ in the New Testament saying, keep my commandments. Solomon said, what has been will be again. There's nothing new under the sun. When I first joined the church that I just left, <laughs> they told me, uh, well, the Old Testament is, is just for our learning. You know, we live by the New Testament. Okay, well, we need to learn this lesson from the Old Testament. What happens when you don't keep God's commandment? And see, I'm, I'm harking on this because I'm going somewhere. I'm leading up to my next lesson. Make sure you get this one and you watch the one after this one. Make sure. Even if you don't agree with what I'm saying. Even if you think I'm crazy, watch the next one. Remember this one, watch the next one. Let's get back to it.